This episode of Hands on Windows is presented free. If you'd like the rest of the episodes filled with great Windows tips and tricks, join Club Twit for $7 a month, or you can get just this podcast for $2.99 a month. Head on over to twit.tv slash club twit for more information. Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at the top five digital media apps in Windows 11. And honestly, one of them is awesome. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The following show is brought to you through the generosity of people like you. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Therott. And this week, we're going to take a look at the top five digital media apps included with Windows 11. So just like the top five productivity apps, uh, a lot of these date back many, many years. Um, and many of them date back to Windows 8 and that beginning of the universal Windows platform, as we now call it. And um, they're basically mobile apps and are trying to address this the way the world was changing when the iPhone came out and, and you know, and tablets and so forth. Um, and on that note, I would say that digital media apps are in many ways more successful than the productivity apps. I think that digital media apps lend themselves to this kind of use case. Uh, that mostly, most of these are kind of what I would call consumption apps, um, and they work well. So this is in many ways a, a nicer list because a lot of those apps I talked about in the productivity segment, I wouldn't typically use myself. I actually do use a lot of these apps. Um, so the, these are pretty good. So we'll start with Photos. Uh, photos was rewritten for Windows 11. Um, in the, if you remember, the Windows 10 version actually had kind of a built-in uh, video editor. So Microsoft has simplified this app. They've turned it into kind of a Windows 11 look and feel kind of a deal. Um, you know, it's got this sidebar over here with uh, your you know different navigation points and so forth. And here you can see the uh, photos and screenshots I've taken recently. So hopefully nothing embarrassing in here. Uh, but this is all of my photos. So all of my photos are all of the photos that are on the computer, which probably aren't going to be too many. Uh, all of the photos that are in OneDrive, right, which I have associated with my Microsoft account. And I back up all the photos I take with my phone to OneDrive. And then optionally iCloud, which is the Apple service. And I did connect my iCloud account to that. So when I take pictures with my iPhone, uh, they will show up here as well. Um, you can specify which folders you're going to view and so forth and so on and so forth. I mean, I think everyone gets the basics of this. But the interesting thing about Photos, the app to me, is that there's really two different experiences. There's the browser, which is what we're looking at now, where we browse through all the photos. And then I'll click on a picture of the cats here. And if I double click on this, it opens in also the Photos app, but in a viewer slash editor um, type situation. So this particular photo, because it's part of a stream, you can see a, a film strip at the bottom. So I can switch between the different photos. There are my cats watching a video about birds and squirrels. <laughs> so they're quite intrigued by this. Um, but you can also go into an editor, which is surprisingly full featured. Um, this takes a second to load. But once this comes up, I would say for, uh, for, for typical photo type needs, right, where you can do cropping, rotation, uh, adjustment across all these different categories, highlight shadows, vignettes, and so forth, um, saturation, warmth, and all that, um, it's, it's nice. So I could tone down the color here. I could turn this into kind of a black and white photo if I wanted. I could amp up the color because we do have colored hue lights you can see in the scene, which are kind of cool, kind of create a nice effect here. Change the temperature, right, make it warmer or cooler and all that kind of stuff. Um, pretty nice selection of filters. Uh, you can do an auto enhance, uh, just like you would expect, you know, punch up the color, etc. cetera. Uh, markup's a little goofy. That just lets you draw on the picture, but um, I'm not gonna focus on that too, too much. By default, this is the app that will appear when you double click on um, a photo or other image file in File Explorer, right? So if I go into this, this is a, a set of photos I took of some computers I was reviewing. Um, I actually have a different um, application set up to view photos um, because I find it quicker for the type of work that I do, but I can view this in photos and you'll see that same film strip kind of comes up. So this is the, the photo app running separately just as a photo viewer. And then again, I can, I can quickly with the keyboard or with the mouse kind of click through each of the photos in this folder, uh, which are all photos of computers that I was reviewing. So, um, you know, it's basic, but uh, it, 
it just, just works really well. So this is really nicely done. And uh, actually, I did not include, I did not <laughs> configure iCloud photos. I'm sorry. But you can, you can uh, configure iCloud if you would like to do that. So that's number one. All right, so number two is Media Player. And this is another app that just goes back in time forever. So back in the mid 2000s, Microsoft uh, created Zune, which was a player, a hardware player that was supposed to compete with the iPod, uh, did poorly in the market. But one of the neat things they did was they created some Zune software. We're starting with version two, probably about 2007, 2008, that software turned into something pretty special. Um, it moved forward to Windows Phone. It moved forward into Windows 8 as something called the Xbox Music app. And there was also a separate Xbox video app. And then it became Groove. And Groove had a, a subscription music service like you see with Spotify and with Apple Music. Um, and then Microsoft got out of that market. And so here we are. So almost 20 years has gone by. And what we have instead is Media Player. And so Media Player is just a solution for local media playback. So you have audio files that you've downloaded or on your computer, you've got video files, whatever they might be. Um, if you have that stuff, you can play them uh, or view them through this app. If you, obviously there are Spotify apps and, and everything else for the subscription stuff. So I'll just play a video here that I know will sort of work. This is just a video of a leak outside of our apartment uh, that people were working on out in the street, but you know, it has all the basics as you would expect. Um, subtitles, uh, full screen, you know, uh, mini player view, et cetera. So you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, it supports separate music and video libraries. Uh, so if you have your own music that you've ripped from CD or purchased uh, legitimately, however you did it, and uh, this is on your computer, you can load up that stuff, uh, go through it with different views, you know, artists, album songs, et cetera, play that music and so forth. So um, it's a pretty basic app but again like photos it takes on that kind of windows 11 look and feel with the nav bar on the left uh it can go dark or light i have it this is happens to be in light mode right now um if you have this need honestly it's not a horrible solution so that works pretty well as well um then there's an app called movies and tv and this one i'm a little concerned about so this one is what i would call a an early windows 10 app meaning just the kind of look and feel of it it has a a strange navigation with these big uh areas at the top um it's designed for people who purchased movies or tv shows from microsoft i hope that none of you have done such a thing. But the other thing that's interesting about it is that if you bought movies or TV shows, or actually it would just be movies, if you bought them from elsewhere and they're compatible with the Movies Anywhere service, you can tie that to your Microsoft account and you can view them and purchase. And so when I go here to this purchase list, I actually have hundreds of movies. I purchased most of them from Apple, but because they're from movie studios that participate in Movies Anywhere, they appear in here and I can view them in this app. And that's actually pretty convenient. Um, you can also, you can view trailers and you can also buy content from Microsoft. Again, don't recommend that. But if you look at a, uh, a trailer, you'll see it, it comes up in the, the Microsoft Store app. It doesn't come up in the in that particular app. But you can see this is a, a Movies Anywhere app from this icon. So if I did purchase it from Microsoft, this would go back and it would work on my Apple TV. It would work on my devices with other apps as well, which is kind of a nicety. So my guess is that this app is probably going to go away. Um, the final kicker for it would be Microsoft bringing their purchased content capabilities into that media player app I just showed you. Uh, for right now, that's not the case. Uh, so this thing has sort of a, a leftover capability here to view local files um, like media player. It doesn't do music. Um, I, I think this is going away. But for right now, uh, for those people who do have those con those content collections, especially if you bought a bunch of movies and or are using movies anywhere, um, this app does work great. So uh, I'm, I don't want to play a, a video because we're recording here, but uh, it does it does work very well. So number four is two separate apps. Again, these are going to be difficult to um, uh, demonstrate, unfortunately, uh, because we're recording, <laughs> but, uh, there's one for audio and one for video, right? So the video version is called camera. Simple enough. It's a basic camera app. It works with whatever webcams you have connected, allows you to take still images and record videos as you would expect. And then sound recorder is exactly what it sounds like. You can specify a microphone. Um, and you can also go into settings and specify the exact recording format and audio quality that you want for all this kind of a stuff. So between these two apps, you have ways on the PC built into Windows to record both audio and video. 
And if you need those things separately for whatever reason, maybe you're uh, doing a video project in an app we're about to talk about and you want to record that stuff separately outside of the app and then you can get those files together and get them ready. Um, these are great ways to do that. And they actually, they, they, they do work really well. Again, hard to uh, demonstrate because of the recording we're doing, but uh, they are built into Windows. The final app is actually a personal favorite. This is a surprisingly uh, great app. Microsoft purchased this a couple of years ago. They include it now in Windows 11. It's called ClipChamp. You probably haven't heard of it. <laughs> so ClipChamp is actually a web-based video editing program built into Windows. They have this upgrade button here because there are certain things that you get if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription or if you pay them $12 a month, you get their essentials plan. So the one thing you get regardless is the ability to export video in 1080p. It doesn't support 4K, which is kind of strange. Uh, no watermarks. Um, there's some free stock images and video and audio you can use. There's some uh, filters and effects you can use and so forth. Um, but if you want things like the premium versions of those things, the stock and the uh, filters and effects, if you want branding kits, uh, content backup to the cloud, you have to pay uh, for the essentials plan, which is $12 a month. So I actually use a different video editor, editor, but the thing that I did when this first came out was I went to test it to see, well, could I duplicate what I do in what I use, which is Adobe Premiere Elements in this app? And aside from outputting in 4K, the answer is yeah, <laughs> I can. So I'll just show you real quick. I'm not gonna go through this uh, too, too deep, but I do wanted to show this off because it's pretty impressive. Um, and I'll probably do a separate video about this at some point because this really is a neat app. But I can go into the uh, the assets that I have for uh, a YouTube channel that my wife and I have. So for example, I can pull in uh, the still image that I use as a title. We have a watermark that we put over the video. There's some intro music, um, which we can drag in here. And then I can go find some video content, right? So if I go to um, my videos folder, actually, let me go to documents because I have some Zoom videos. So we, my wife and I recorded video through Zoom. I can pull that in. And you can kind of see the makings of what is a, a kind of a basic video where you pull in the different elements. It supports overlays. Um, it supports, you know, audio tracks on top of video, that kind of thing. Um, actually, I pulled the wrong one in here. Let me pull the video down there. And then I can bring the watermark and just put it on top of it. And this, so when I play this video, if I pull this out over here, you can see like this little bit in the corner is the is this watermark. It's not, those are two different video elements on top of each other. This is fairly sophisticated. So if I just hit play, music starts, you know, it runs through. Um, I didn't do any fade yet on the audio or anything like that. And of course, this is unedited video. I would actually trim this and so forth. And that's kind of the extra stuff I'll get to later. But uh, it supports, you know, green keying. If you have content that's like an animated logo or something and it's on a green screen, it will do that properly. So it's transparent. Um, I can select this audio, like I said, and um, go in and uh, fade it in and out if I want for, you know, whatever amount of time. I can just choose one second, which is, I think, what I actually do do. Um, and so it kind of does that. It's just, it's just a surprisingly full feature program. And it has all this other stuff that I'm not even really going to get to, right? So you could record yourself off the screen. Uh, you can record the screen with it. You can record yourself off of a camera. Uh, you can, they have templates for different designs. They have music and special effects. Um, you, they have stock video. I went in here earlier. I was just like, okay, well, we, we make videos about Mexico. Like what's there for Mexico? So there's some goofy stuff like, uh, the, the flag blowing in the wind. There was a kind of a fun uh, little day of the dead guys playing <laughs> trumpets or whatever. Um, same thing with stock images. You know, if you want to add those to a video again, this is kind of a cool stock image, a vector doodle of Mexico city. This is pretty accurate. Actually, obviously add text and graphics and transitions. I uh, usually just, just, just use a basic crossfade, but if you want to throw a crossfade in between those two things, it's that simple. You just kind of drag it in and you can see it fading right? As it goes between the two elements. Um, this is a surprisingly good app. It, it's again, it, the fact that this thing is a, a web app, um, kind of blows me away. It's, it's really, really good. Um, so if you have any interest in video editing, this thing is just built into windows. If you have a Microsoft 365, a personal or family account, you get some additional features around the stock imagery and, uh, videos and sounds. And I think special effects and filters and things like that. Um, but even if you don't, uh, you still get a bunch of functionality right out of the box. It's a really good app. 
So that's the top five. We get photos, media player, movies, and TV, voice recorder slash camera. Those are two apps I know. And ClipChamp, which is the one I bet most of you haven't heard about. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Uh, we will be back every Thursday with a new video, which you can find at twit.tv slash H-O-W. And if you'd like to join Club Twit, where you can get access to this and many other uh, new podcasts, uh, please visit club.twit.tv. Thank you so much. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands on Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that, too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.